Welcome to Gulf Stream today, Ron Nicoletti, along with Katie Stazak. It is Wednesday, and it is uh, we're running right through our holiday week. Uh, we're off. Uh, we're running today. We're off tomorrow, and we're going to run on Friday, Saturday, of course, Sunday. This summer to speed. But first of all, we want to let you know about the Rainbow Six today. Where it starts in race number three. Race is three to eight. We got another mandatory payout today. It is opening day as far as the fiscal year is concerned in South Florida, and we're also going to have uh, mandatory payouts both in the uh, pick five and the super high five today later on today so it should be a lot of fun and as i mentioned this is our holiday week of racing and we have a couple of days here that are going to be very exciting you see on saturday we got a special post of 12:45. of course that is fourth of july and on sunday the summer to speed katie 12 30 post the races are really filling up nicely what an exciting day that's going to be it is going to be a fantastic day Four graded stakes on the card, nine stakes in total, two of them with Breeders' Cup entries up for grabs. They're going to pay your way to the Breeders' Cup. That would be pretty special. And, Ron, we had the first day of summer a couple days ago, but it's the first official day of summer here at Gulfstream because we're starting the summer race meet. That's right, the summer race meet's now. So, cross out all the trainer stands and jockey standing, owner standings. We start anew today. It's going to be interesting. Congratulations to all the people that won uh, uh, the leading title, Tyler Gaffion, leading jockey, and our leading owner, Frank Calabrese. So, it was a lot of fun. Leading trainer was Kirk Zadie. So, uh, that meet has ended. It is summertime now. We would have told you that it was summertime about two and a half months ago up here on the stage, but it is summertime today. You know, before we delve into the Wednesday card, we're going to go and see what's uh, trending around the country as far as tweets go. And our first uh, tweet today is about a horse that we all love dearly, Wise Dan. Two-time horse of the year, Wise Dan, was forced to miss the Breeders' Cup and defend his title in the mile last year when he got injured. But he's on the comeback trail, and he was just given full clearance yesterday to resume full trainer the training. They're going to give him one more exam before he can breeze, but it looks like we will be seeing Wise Dan again, and that's encouraging news and great for racing. Well, we got a story, too, that we wanted to show you about a former racehorse that uh, is now taking a second career. Yeah, it's so nice to see horses go on to second careers, and pretty remarkable when you can see a good racehorse go on and excel in something else. This is Ichabod Crane. He's owned by trainer Graham Motion. He was third in the Preakness at one point, a very nice horse. He was sent to top Olympian eventer Philip Dutton, and he is excelling in his second career as an eventer, jumping huge fences out in the open. It's very exciting, and it's congratulations to him, and kudos to uh, Graham Motion for sending him out and Give him a try at that. You know, we mentioned on Sunday we got the summer to speed, but we also have a, a, a nice handicapping seminar going on. And uh, this one tweeted by our buddy Julie Druder, who's the uh, weather person on Channel 10, local Channel 10. And I know you're part of this Girls Got Game on Sunday. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. This is the Girls Got Game betting challenge on Sunday. It's for women only, and I'm going to be helping give a seminar teaching women how to bet, how to read the program. And then there's going to be a competition throughout the day you win any money that you make on your bets and there's a twenty five hundred dollar cash prize up for grabs and you can enjoy the entire summit of speed car twenty five hundred yes women only right women only ron but i might be able to find you a week <laughs> yeah there you go i'll try and get in there that's a pretty nice contest so uh that's going to be on sunday just part of the pomp and circumstance here also uh triple crown the jockey victor espinosa will be here signing autographs so this weekend at Gulfstream park is something you really have to pay attention to as i mentioned we're going to look at the Wednesday card, and we're going to go right to it. Race number one, five furlongs on the turf. Turf course is listed as firm. Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. Non-winners of two races in life or three-year-olds. Jockey on the two is Ender, Eder Martinez and scratch the number five. Our bands make her dance, and uh, we're going to show you a video of the horse that we both have on top of our ticket, and that's awesome and then some going to be looking to rebound today, but she had a little bit of trouble last time out. Definitely had an excuse. We're going to show you her last race from June 20th, and this was at the $30,000 level. You're going to see her hit the gate, and she breaks very slowly. She ends up spotting the field quite a few lengths. You see her at the back of the pack there. She's going to cut her tag in half today, and with a cleaner trip, I think she's going to be a horse to beat in here. Just two starts back, she ran in the Tiger Lily handicap behind our free roll, and three starts back, she won a starter allowance here 
at this turf sprinting distance. Yeah, and I think she was just knocked off her game, uh, you know, to be a little cute about it, but uh, she re never really got a chance to run last time. That's why I put it on top of the ticket, too. You know, number seven, LG's Rose, who we both have in second, is a four-year-old daughter of BL's Appeal, making her second start. She returned from about a four-month layoff to finish a good second at this level in distance. Uh, Sandy Cataldi, Cataldi is the trainer, and I think she spots her perfectly in the opening race. Completely agree. I thought she ran a very strong second for coming off the layoff and should be better second start back. Well, the horse that we mentioned at Scratching, it was actually my third selection in here. So I added the number three far from here. And this one is a candidate, certainly, to rebound uh, after following a, a really nice three-and-a-half led the maiden victory at the $12,500 level. Then comes back, duels for the lead, and, and weakens to finish fifth, beating three-and-a-half lengths against this caliber competition. The old bounce rebound angle. And look who's riding, a jockey named Edgar Zayas, who had... Five wins yesterday. Five wins yesterday. A tremendous day for <laughs> Edgar Zayas. And I don't think you would want anyone else on your horse today looking to help them rebound and give a leg up. Yeah, and I just thought that, that you know, that horse, uh, you know, certainly bounced back. A lot of time horses, you know, well, break their maiden, impressively bounce a little bit in their second start and come back run well. And as we mentioned, Edgar Zayas certainly riding in great form. Let's go to race number two. And this is one mile on a fast main track. Claim is three and up. $10,000. Scratch the number five. A fleet accompli. And uh, we both, oh no, you went with the number one, Palatine. Oh, he's your buddy. I know that's why you got Palatine Hill on top of your He's thing. a fan favorite, <laughs> but he's such a hard knocking horse. He runs his heart out every time. He's going to make his first start off the claim today for trainer Marcial Navarro. He's doing that at a 31% clip success rate and winning at a 43% clip overall at this race meet. This horse is hard knocking as it is, but maybe he'll be given a leg up when running for a new outfit. And I thought with those kind of percentages with a nice horse, I had to put him on top. But Chillin Dillon is in great form right now. Yeah, and you know, getting back to Palatine Hill, he's a six-time local winner, so he always runs his heart out. But Chillin Dillon is stepping up the competition today after a pair of, I thought, very impressive victories at the $6,250 level, which included that recent uh, six-length uh, plus score at this one-mile distance. But he's going to read that really solid performance to beat Palatine Hill. I, I just thought I would give that one a chance today. But, uh, you know, I'm thinking exact the box, and we both have the two. El Grand Joyful in second. This one third, made, excuse me. Well, you think in second because he made a nice <laughs> bid to get up for second last time out. He was only beaten a length and a half, and that was against $12,500 claimers at the distance. I just thought he was well spotted. Seemed to be primed to hold his good form for Chuck Simon. Yeah, and that's the uh, second race. Is the first the leg of our first the two pick fours on the afternoon. Races two, three, four, and five, and that's a fifty cent wager. Uh, we're going to go to the third race today. If I can turn the page, there you go. And this one is back on the firm turf course. Five furlongs, maiden special weight, fillies and mares, three and up. Uh, do we have one scratch in here of the number four horse in here? And that's Picardia, and you went with the number three horse in here and that is Storm and Charlotte. Lots of options that we have here in the opening leg of the Rainbow Six. You're going to go to go a little bit deep <laughs> early. I gave the edge to Storm and Charlotte, who you also used on the ticket. She really broke slowly in her career debut, then began to make a little bit of a rate rally before fading on the main track on June 7th for trainer Michael Yates. Going to get blinkers added today. She tries the turf. Leading rider Tyler Gaffleone starting fresh today, but he was our leading rider for the meet. He's going to pick up the mount today, and I thought this was just a nice spot for her, and I'm looking forward to seeing how she responds to those changes. Well, I love a horse in here today, uh, and that is the number six, Bellata, and I'll tell you why. $160,000 daughter of Spitestown, now in the Ruben Monjes barn. This one is making her first start. She had a trouble debut in which she chased the pace early. She had a check in that race at the 316th bowl. She faded to finish 10. But that turned out to be a monster key race where four of the horses that ran in the next start came out to win. So four of eight of the horses, 50% come back to win the next start. They had a similar horse last week coming off a layoff that came out of a key hit race and got beat this much by its stable mate. It was my long shot that day. So it's burned in my mind that it finished second that day. So I put number six, Balada, the old key race angle right on top of the ticket. The three, Storm and Charlotte, for all the reasons you mentioned. And, and I used the seven, Starship Tammy. Two for five in the money at the distance, turns back, disputed the pace, faded when blinkers were added for its recent outing, going seven and a half furlongs. This one could be a sneaky at a price, but Katie's right. Look at those selections up there. We only have one in common. Tell me about the eight. 
Well, how about a horse that hasn't raced <laughs> yet? This is a daughter of Street Sense. Cost $160,000 at a yearling at the Keeling September sale. She's going to debut today for trainer Monty Thomas after recording nine pretty nice published breezes. Jonathan Gonzalez is going to ride. And I didn't use the morning line favorite net here, and that is number five, Artie Babe, who I know you have on your ticket. I actually ended up throwing this one in with the scratch of Picardia. little surprised that she's the morning line favorite, but she has run well in the past. She's going to be returning from an eight-month layoff today and cutting back to five furlongs. That's the distance at which she finished third in each of her first two career starts. So we'll see if she can return to that form. Well, if you agree with me or you agree with Katie or you don't agree with both, was you know the way out all button <laughs> that is for the first leg of the rainbow six today so we'll see how that race plays out yeah i mean it's a short field and we have a you have a lot of different options in there let's go to race number four six furlongs maiden special weight three-year-olds and up these are also under maiden special weight conditions we're going to have seven runners going to the field and uh, you went uh, with the number who did you go with in here but i don't think it's up there yet i took the six it's pure talent from the stanley gold barn he's hit the board in five straight starts just hasn't been able to get that breakthrough victory yet, but I thought he ran a really solid race last time out. He was second to a dominant winner in Son of a Derby winner. No one was catching that horse that day, but he was still more than a length clear of the third place finisher, and what sold it for me was that it was his first start in more than seven months, so he should be better second start back. Yeah, I got him on the ticket, but I took another horse that came out of that same race, and actually pure talent on my ticket for finishing in front of the horse I'm going to mention. Focus on me, and a horse I have in second, and it's free runner. Both of them beat by the number six pure talent but you know me trying to be cute i'm going to go with the five focus on me seventy thousand dollar gelded son of Kansaros stretching out to three quarters of a mile today after i thought a promising five and a half furlong debut for trainer dave braddy he just horse made a bid like at the quarter pole he set up for third but he was beaten ten lengths by the horse that Katie mentioned, son of a derby winner, who actually, she's right, no one was beating horse that day. I just thought this has had some upside, so I threw him on my ticket for a free runner. Working well, shows a sharp three furlong bullet out of the gate in preparation for that first start. Finished fifth, behind who? Six, pure talent, of course, son of a derby winner, then pure talent. We'll see if they can turn the tables <laughs> today, and again, I threw in... Another horse making a career debut today. That's Lily's finale. This one, son of Northern Fleet, debuting for trainer Ralph Nix. Nine works here at Gulfstream, and they're pretty solid. It's some pretty nice four and five furlong works. Jose Caraballo is going to be aboard for Nix. He has won three of six starts for this barn. That's 50%. And, you know, that race four starts the uh, pick five this afternoon. And as we mentioned today on our opening day, it's a, a state law that uh, we have a mandatory payout today. So that pick, pick five, too, will have a mandatory payout. And now we're going to go to race number five. This one's a mile and a 16th on the grass. Claim is three and up. Non-winners of three races in life or a race in six months. That's uh, New Year's Day was the last time uh, one of these horses might have won. And uh, scratch number 10 in here, Forest of Friends, and you went with the number nine horse in here, and that is so cozy. He had a little bit of trouble last time out, so that's why I'm going to give him an excuse for his last start. He got bumped around on the first turn pretty good. He just never got comfortable, but two starts back, he finished third at that level, beaten only a half length. He made a four-wide bid, was gaining as they crossed the wire. I like that he's returning to this distance. think it's going to be the key. He's won twice at a mile and a sixteenth think he can move forward with a better trip and with making a slight drop down in class. Well, I went with the number six in here, Fighter, who lived up to his name. I thought he fought on bravely uh, through the early going before getting uh, late in a pair of uh, similar going seven and a half furlongs and a mile in the 16th, respectively. The trainer is Dario Vega, lightens the impost, and tabs apprentice uh, Tyler Gaffleone to ride in this race. And I just liked that performance last time out, and I, I thought maybe that this horse uh, uh, can have a tactical speed advantage early on in the race, getting in a little light with the apprentice, so I put six fighter on on my ticket. Who else did you use? I threw in the four HMS anniversary. The four-time winner at the distance was well beaten last time out, but turned in pretty solid performances in his previous four starts, including a third-place finish three starts back at the $16,000 level. So I'd tag twice the amount that he'll run for today. So I thought perhaps he could rebound considering his previous form. I also used Bright Guy and so did you. Yeah, Bright Guy. I was looking down at Bright Guy before. Uh, you know, a big price on the board. He's 15 to 1 in the morning. Wow. Line. Yeah, he's dropping to the $8,000 level uh, after returning from an extended layoff 
enough to finish a, a useful eight. That was against 12,500 three lifetime claimers going seven and a half furlongs. The trainer, Gustavo Delgado, he's really good with second half the layoff, about 25% a layoff of that uh, length. And has Eddie Castro atop this previous winner at the distance? Uh, you know, I think it's a horse you got to put on your ticket in there. And you could just see by our selections how wide open this race really is. Another wide open race in today's Rainbow Six sequence, but I think you have to have bright guys somewhere. You must respect the barn. Yeah, uh, and I agree there. And the nice 15 to 1 on the morning line. We'll see if that holds up. Let's go to race number six this afternoon. We're back on the fast main track. It's a six furlong sprint, maiden claimers. Phillies and Mayors, three-year-olds and up $10,000, clean slate, nine runners going to the post, no scratches or jockey changes, and I think we have the logical choice on top here, pleasantly, Miranda, that's number six. We're back in agreement, <laughs> we've got a cold try going here, Ron, pleasantly, Miranda is a daughter of pleasantly perfect, she dueled to the wire and was just edged last time out on June 20th, lost by a half length for trainer Chuck Simon, all three of her in the money finishes have come here at Gulfstream, and she's finished second and two of her last three starts at the distance. This seems to be the perfect spot for her. Well, number three, the way the bell is, is turning back to three quarters of a mile and getting the services of Prentice Tyler Gaffleon, hoping both that distance change and the weight allowance of 118 pounds helps produce the very elusive maiden victory in here. 19 races with no maiden win yet, three seconds and two thirds. Could not put this one on top of the ticket for the reasons I just mentioned, but it's getting some karma changes, so maybe that's enough to finally get this one over the top. 0 for 19 is a glaring number, <laughs> and that's why I couldn't put her on top either, but does belong somewhere on the ticket. And then we both also use the five, Arte Latino. Yeah, this one has her claim tag sliced right in, ha right in half today. Made that five wide mood on the turn prior to finishing six. As I mentioned, was against $20,000 maidens. Antonio Sano, Marcos Meneses in the saddle today. I like this one just because she's lightly raced. This is only going to be her third start, so there's plenty of room for improvement. Well, let's go to race number seven this afternoon, and this one is on the turf at a mile in the 16th. It's an allowance optional claimer for three-year-olds and up, and we have two scratches in here. So scratch to number four, Johnny Handsome, who was my long shot today. So we're going to have to wait for another day. And number 10, Tiger of Wales. We want to go back and show you a video, and I really didn't know what to do with it. I wanted to put this horse on top. I didn't, but I put it on my ticket. Hollywood Idol. It's a little bit of a gamble. This horse certainly has all the makings to be a very nice horse, but he's had a little bit of trouble, hasn't been able to figure things out. But this was his turf debut back on May 22nd and his debut for trainer Ralph Nix. And I thought this horse was very game and put in a pretty nice effort here and gets this win, his maiden breaking victory. The horse there that was second, Giant's Passion, would come back to break his own maiden in his next start and flattered him. That was Hollywood Idol's first start off a three-month layoff. Should be fitter today, but we'll see how he handles facing winners. Yeah, and he's a $650,000 son of Smart Strike, and he's going to face those winners today. And I, I thought the exact way you did, too. I, I didn't put him on top, but I was sure tempted. Had to put him on the ticket because I think there's a lot of upside on that. Showed a definite fondness for the turf. But I did go with the horse you have in second, and that is Taylor the Heart on top of my ticket. That's the number six. This one moved to the Peter Walder Barn via the claiming route. Makes his, fir his first start since rallying four wide to defeat. The $30,000 condition claimers at this distance. You know the tales of Peter Walder. He's excellent with new off the claim, 30%. He does a great job. Edgar Prado will be in the saddle. I just thought he was a logical choice. You used him on the ticket, too. Who else do you have? Now, here's the horse. I was torn before you get started. I was torn between making... Johnny Hanson, my long shot, or the horse we're going to talk about next, or maybe in the and that's the nine, Lost Camper, who I think is a great great bet at 15 to 1. He's a fantastic bet at 15 <laughs> to 1. I'm quite happy to see that number right there on the program. <laughs> this horse, you really can't say anything bad about him. He always, he runs, well. always runs his race. He's going to get in this spot after his race came off the turf on Saturday. was supposed to run then. He scored a gutsy win last time out over another starter in this race, and that is Whisper on the Wind, the two horse. He's three for four with a second over the Gulfstream Park turf course and a nine-time winner at the distance. The only thing that you could say with perhaps a question mark is that 
he hasn't faced quite the caliber of competition that some others in here have. And the jockey, Brittany Otterburn, handles this horse perfectly, which is yes. another plus. I did use the number seven, Majestic Breeze, who's stretching out today to this mile in the 16th after notching his second consecutive victory and third score in his last four races when defeating $30,000 condition claimers at a mile. A jockey, a Tyler Gaffion, picks up the mount. And I know Katie likes this stuff. Pro Edgar Prado, who rode him to his three recent victories, moves to the sixth tail of the heart. I don't know what to make of that. Well, I like the sixth <laughs> tail of the heart very much. I know you talked about him already, mm, but right. the Peter Walger first off the claim mm. angle is one of my absolute favorites. He's competed against Tougher, and he has the experience edge over a horse like Hollywood Idol. Right. I just thought I'd take a shot with the first time facing uh, I agree with you 100%, but Lost Camp is one you got to go back and look at. I think that's a horse, when you're putting your Rainbow Six or your, all your exotic wager tickets together, throw that horse in. It only costs you another 20 cents or whatever it is, one that you might want to have to use. Let's go to the eighth and final race on the Wednesday card. Six furlongs, maiden claim is three-year-olds and upward. We're going to have a full field of nine runners for the Super High Five, and we want to go back and show you a performance of the number six, Mascherado, who we both have on top of our ticket. We are in a complete agreement here again, so we've got your super high five ticket more than halfway made up for you today. Take a look at Mascherado last time out. This is from June 18th. He made a late rally, comes on pretty well here to just miss the win. He's out there in the center of the track. He's only going to miss by a neck. And this was just his second career start. It looks even closer than a neck to be right there from that angle. He's just run well in every start he's made so far. And if he continues that upward trend, he should be your winner today. Well, number nine, Social Roy, is another dropping after dueling for the lead throughout uh, before he was nipped at the wire for second. By who? Mascherano. So uh, the rematch sets up another classic clash between speed and stalker. So we'll see. And that's uh, where maybe the... The way the race is playing, the track is playing this afternoon comes into effect. But I, I'm in agreement with Katie. I think Mascherano's the one to beat. We both have number nine, Social Roy in third. And you used the, three, uh, the one, excuse me, Whiskey Wizard in the third. Yeah, well, he's very well spotted for his career debut. Finds himself in a nice, favorable, softer spot here for trainer Ralph Nix. He's a son of old fashion. Consistent, steady workout tab. 12 published works on record. And he's going to have Tyler Gaffleone in the irons. Well, that's how we see Wednesday's action. So let's update you on everything that's happening today and over the next couple of days. Today we got the eight race card. We got a mandatory payout in the Rainbow Six starts in race number three. A mandatory payout also in the Pick Five, which starts in race four, and in the Super High Five, which of course is the last race every every day. We're dark for live racing tomorrow, but we come back on Friday. Full steam ahead for the uh, 4th of July weekend. It is going to be definitely something to celebrate, not only the independence of our great nation, <laughs> but also some pretty great racing and some great horses here at Gulfstream. Yeah, and a certain jockey going to be signing autographs in here, Victor Espinosa, on Sunday. So the whole weekend is going to be fantastic. Good luck with all your selections today. Katie, I think we'll wrap it up, don't you? Yeah, let's wrap it up. Let's get this day going.